when you think of Brighton, you might think of the seafront, the famous pier, the cosmopolitan lifestyle, some of the fascinating shopping attractions, and of course the marina. What you don't think when you come to the Brighton Centre is indoor speedway. But that's exactly what we've got for you today. And for the next 30 minutes, we'll be looking at some of the thrills, the spills, the excitement, finding out why the riders do it, and why do fans from all over the United Kingdom travel two weeks before Christmas to see their heroes in action. So consider this, a 500cc motorcycle, no brakes, no gears, all done on a track half the size of a conventional speedway track. Maybe now you can understand why fans from all over the country flock to see action like this. The average speedway rider retires in his 30s, but Bobby Schwartz from the USA is no average rider. At 49 years of age, he's still going strong and still winning. This is my 32nd season in speedway. Um, and I've actually won first division mains in every season, in, you know, from California to here. And uh, it's just fun. To, it keeps me young, I believe. And uh, it's fun to be around the guys. And when I come here, I always see new faces and old faces. So it's it's a good trip for me. One of the co-promoters is former British Grand Prix champion Martin Dugard, who promotes and races. It was a dream we had about 10 years ago. Um, I did a, a thing for you bet, and uh, that was in a much smaller studio than this one. And um, that, that turned out quite good, and I said to John, look, I've had an idea, what's the chance of getting it going? And um, we sort of progressed now where we put this in, um, but it was something that we sort of dreamt about, but we, we didn't think it was ever going to happen. But since we've been doing this, and then they've, had, they've done it at a much bigger scale at the Millennium Stadium, so but this was one of the first ones to be done. I'm 49 now, and I'm not 29 or 18, you know, so it's hard, but I'm, uh, I, I'll rise to the occasion. I'll do the best I can. I'm really mainly here to have fun and have a good time and not get hurt. So I'm not really an aggressive rider now. I'm pretty much a calculated, you know, a textbook type rider, and I'm... I'll see how it goes for me. Uh, last year I got a little tired in the final because it's six laps. It's not the six laps that's so hard, it's the fact that the tires get warm and the track gets bitey and it gets a little more grip. And that's the problem, it gets tougher as we go along in the race. So this year I'm going to try to lower the gear a little bit in the final, and if I can make the final, and, um, and try to win it. The youngest rider in the field at just 16 years of age is Lewis Bridger, tipped by many in conventional speedway to be a future world champion. For him today really is a dream come true. Being here a couple of years ago and you know, sitting up there on that balcony, like looking at it, wishing I'd be here one day, you know, it's a great venue and yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I just hope you know I can leave here tonight, had a lot of fun, you know, got in quite a few points and maybe, you know, beat a few of the top boys and I hope me and Ed do well in the pairs, I'm sure we will do with our small track experience and I just hope I have a good evening and go home tomorrow uninjured. So a large crowd at the Brighton Centre looking forward to seeing some of their favourite riders in action today. Our commentator is Ken Burnett and he'll be taking you through some of the racing. Just a recap on the scores, it's three points for a win. Two for a second, one for a third, nothing for last. The first competition is best pairs, and the team with the most points at the end of the event wins. It's as simple as that. So the rider is getting ready for action in heat number one, and the rider we're looking at now is young Lewis Bridger. So there is uh, Boogaloo Schwartz, former Craig Lee, and uh, Renning rider before moving on to Eastbourne. Of course, he had a spell maybe at King's Lynn towards the end of his career as well. Was a World Cup winner with America. So, and of course, World Pairs champion with uh, Bruce Pennell, and I think, but also with Dennis Sagalos as well. So he's got a good pedigree. He's also got a very good track record around here at the Brighton Centre. Here we go, heat number one. And away they go, and into the first turn. Good start there from the Californians. But it is Kennett who's gone up the inside. Kennett takes over the lead. Second place, Sam McConnell. 
Bridger in third place, Bobby Schwartz is at the back, and uh, well, Bridger's both wheels gone over the centre there, but it is Kennett in front. Second place there, it is McConnell going in very, very hard, still Schwartz in third place because Bridger will have been excluded for crossing the line there, but still Kennett leading the way. Goes round the top turn, second place there it is, McConnell, and third place will be Bobby Boogaloo Schwartz, so it's three points apiece in heat number one. Bridger excluded for both wheels crossing the inside line, and that means again it of course gets three points, and McConnell gets two, Bobby Schwartz gets three, one. And of course those two teams are level, certainly uh, Eddie Kennett there in joining himself. then hurry on one looks like Werner has moved to the outside so swap the gate positions here teamwork perhaps Corey on gate number two and Provenci there on gate number three here we go then heat number three and away they go and the charge for the first time good start there for Roma Provenci Provenci in front hurry in second place Werner there in third place Corey at the back but it is the Arena Essex pair, Roman Provenci, the Russian, and Paul Hurry in second place. Go around the top turn on this very, very neat and compact little circuit here. So around the top turn there is Provenci in front and Hurry in second place. And it looks like being a 5-1 to the Arena pair here. And there's a few fans from Perfleet here enjoying this one. And Hurry there getting close to, oh, he's fenced his own teammate. Down they go. And my word, we got problems here because Provenci and Hurry bit the dust there, and the team riding got just a little bit too tight. And uh, well, we wait for the decision, and we can tell you that Brent Werner went over the line in first place, and there is no second place finisher. Ronnie Corey didn't make it to the line, and the other two aren't going to make it either. So, uh, very interesting that one. then the riders at the line so four Americans in this one and away they go into the first turn it's awfully tight there but it is Kerr who oh, we got the rough end of the pineapple there and oh he's gone flying let's go down the back straight there and well the red lights have come on so it was uh, Janeiro who was in front at the time of the stoppage and uh, well how about that? That was a pretty hairy old turn indeed. And uh, Gennaro there on gate number two. Schwartz on three. Kerr will start 15 metres back. He was penalised for that one. And away they go. And it's a very tight first turn. And this time Gennaro gives Schwartz a shove into the fence. And it's getting very, very hairy out there. Schwartz still down. Gennaro going to check on him. And of course they are real good sportsmen, they're all friends at the end of the day, but when they are on those machines, they just want to go out there and race. So here we go then for the third time of asking. All four riders are back on the circuit. So McConnell on one, Janeiro on two, Schwartz on three, Chris Kerr, remember he's already been penalised, he'll start 15 metres back, here we go. Green lights on, and away they go in the charge for the first turn, and it is Gennaro in trouble again. And look at this here, tremendous action. So out in front, it is Sean McConnell in the way. Bobby Schwartz in second place, having picked himself up, dusted himself down. And oh, McConnell's gone down now. It's all happening in this one. And uh, well, he's back up and he's into third position, but out in front, it is Bobby Schwartz. Second place there, it is Chris Kerr who's come through. Remember, he started 15 metres back on this one. But Schwartz it is who wins 
heat number six and second place goes to Chris Kerr third place there goes to Sean McConnell and uh, no points there for Billy Gennaro who uh, spun out of that one Then Dugard there on gate number two. Tomashek on the outside. And uh, Chris Kerr there on gate number three. Janeiro on the inside. Good start there. Oh, problems. Let's come off the second turn there. Two of them are gone down. Chris Kerr and Martin Dugard, the only two still on their machines. So here we go then, Gennaro on one, Dugard on two, Kerr on three, Tomashek on the outside. And away they go and into the first turn and look how tight it is there and Chris Kerr gets the rough end of the pineapple on that second turn and problems there, my word, he's on right through the safety fence. Absolutely evil looking crash there, Gennaro is down with uh, Martin Dugard, I think it is. And uh, well... Really, it was a horrible looking tangle, and in fact, it was Lubus Tomashek. And uh, that was a quite horrific crash. And of course, the uh, bite there with Janeiro went right through the gap in the safety fence. It's a good job there's no one sitting in the front row. Tomashek goes round to the start line. And we can tell you then the forward lineup. Martin Dugard on the outside. Next him, Lewis Bridger on gate number three. Lubus Tomashek on two. Edward Kenny on the inside gate. Gate number one. Here we go for the grand final. And the green light is on. And away they go. A regular old start there for Tomashek. But a good one for Dugard from the outside. So Martin Dugard it is in front. Second place, Ed Kenny. Third place, and Lubus Tomashek. Lewis Bridger is at the back, so if it stays like this, Dugard and Tomashek will win it. So Martin Dugard leading away. Remember, four points for the win here. Kennett in second place. We knew it'd be between these two. They're both unbeaten, but it is Dugard still leading. And Bridger put in Tomashek under a bit of pressure there for the third place position. And that, of course, worth two points. And here he comes up the inside. Bridger comes through into third place to join his partner and that would be enough to clinch it for the youngsters. Dugard remember four points for the win. Kennett would get three and Bridger two here. They would take it by five to four. There is Martin Dugard. He's going to remain unbeaten. Edward Kennett going very very wide there. The red lights have come on and the reason being that Lubus Tomashek has uh, parted company with his machine but they've gone over the finishing line. Dugard has won it. He gets four points, but it is Lewis Bridger and Edward Kennett who pick up five points for the second and third place. And they are the Pairs champions for 2005. Being paired up with Ed, I know he's a defending champion for this year. And you know, it's a little bit of pressure putting on me because like, if I wasn't scoring the points, I'd be letting Ed down. But luckily he was on a full 15 maximum and I was on eight, you know, and no one else was really any higher than eight, you know, Janeiro and that all on only eight. So I knew as Ed was on a maximum and, you know, I was on eight. Well, we, I knew we would get into the final, but when they said six laps, I thought good, because I always need that extra lap, but... I know, didn't. When it, yeah. <laughs> when, it, when Ed said to me, you, all you've got to do is come third, and I thought he meant if he won it, and I had to come third. But when I saw him in second and I was in the back, that's when it really worried me. And I started to think, you know, roll it off, start to try and find some drive. And I was going around on the boards and everything. I just calmed down a bit. And yeah, it was really great to win it. So there you have it, meeting number one. And for Lewis Bridger, the ideal debut. You couldn't ask more than that than to be part of a winning partnership after your very first meeting. And what a debut to have. It follows on to a second meeting this evening where instead of it being a pairs event, it's every man for themselves. Who should we be watching out for? Don't discount Bobby Schwartz. He was pretty lively in the pairs earlier on today. Also Martin Dugard, although he was tiring towards the end of the meeting, he's got to be one of the favourites as well. You've seen Edward Kenner already. More Speedway directly after the break.